Today, I want to take you through a tour of Boston from my own camera roll. Like many of you, I love taking photos of the world around me, my everyday life. And mostly, I take these photos using my phone. Globally, we take more than five billion pictures every day. And more than 90% of these pictures are using phones, just like this one in our pocket. But today, I want to convince you that your phones and the pictures that your phone takes can actually capture a lot more than you might expect. My name is Nikhil Bahari. I'm a graduate student in the camera culture group at MIT and also a NASA graduate research fellow. My research at MIT is centered around how we can design new AI systems that can see more, see the invisible, from pictures that we take every day. To convince you of this, I want to take you through a tour of my life over five years here in Boston using actual photos that I've taken, all stored in my camera roll. When I first flew into Boston, one of the first things I wanted to do was check out Cambridge, take a look at Harvard and MIT campuses. If you take the bus, you might get dropped off here at the heart of MIT on Mass Ave. And if you continue down Mass Ave, you'll eventually reach Harvard. Now, each of these pictures has one thing in common. They're all actually capturing something else. And that is shadows. Shadows are all around us, and in some ways, we almost take them for granted. Take a look at this picture, for example. From just the shadows in this picture, you can tell that I was taking the picture with my phone, maybe standing next to my friend. You might be able to guess what we were wearing. And just from the length of the shadows, you could even infer what time of day it is or roughly how tall we are. Shadows can reveal so much about the hidden world around us that our cameras would otherwise never be able to see. For example, when you take a forward-facing photo, no matter how fancy your camera is, you'll never be able to see yourself in that picture. But because of shadows, we don't need to flip the camera around to know that we're there. We just need the sun to be in the right position and cast a shadow into our camera's field of view. And the cool part about this is that we don't even need to move to see more about what's going on in the scene. We just need the sun to move and cast new shadows from potentially other hidden objects, revealing even more about our environment. Now, as humans, we understand what these shadows mean and what they reveal about the world around us. But AI systems actually have a lot of trouble reasoning about shadows and what they can uncover. So how do we design new systems which can take all of these shadows, like all the shadows I've captured here in Boston, and turn them into some sort of insight about the world around us? My work at MIT has shown exactly that. We've been able to design new AI systems which can take all of the shadows, all the shadows across a city, and turn those shadows into city-scale 3D models, for example, from satellite imagery. Continuing on, as students, we like to say we spend a lot of time in the city, so we might check out Boston's North End, eat some Italian food. If we catch a rare sunny day in Boston, we may take a look at the public garden. But inevitably, as students, we will end up back in the lab. And for me, that's at the MIT Media Lab, where you'll find me proudly representing my team at my desk. And if you visit us at the Media Lab, and if you're lucky, you might also run into Moose. Each of these pictures has something else in common. They're all capturing reflections. The building on the left shows a reflection of the sky behind me where I was taking the picture. The water shows the underside of the duck's beak. You can see me proudly taking a picture of the Steelers helmet on my desk. And if you stare long enough into Moose's eyes, who knows what you'll find. Maybe the best example of reflections are every day when we drive. Take this video, for example, that I took in Boston traffic. You can see reflections on the ground, 
in other cars. We even use reflections every day to drive using our mirrors. So we as humans understand what these reflections mean and what they tell us about the world around us. But again, AI systems don't know how to do that. They don't know what these reflections are. And there's two big reasons for that. The first is that the 3D world around us in a reflection is warped by the 2D object surface. And the second issue is that the color of the world around us is mixed with the color of the object itself. Now again, we as humans know how to separate these out almost implicitly, but AI systems don't. So how do we design new systems which can actually use reflections to see more about the world around us? Well, at our lab at MIT, that's exactly what I've done. I've helped design new AI systems which can take any photo of an object and turn those photos into photos of the object's color and, separately, the object's reflections. And the cool part about this is that when you isolate the reflections on an object, you can actually use that object as a camera to the outside world. If you stick around longer at the Media Lab, you might check out our camera culture group where you'll see setups that look something like this, or like this, or like this one. Now, these pictures aren't special because they're capturing something hidden. Maybe they are. But it's actually because they're all lab recreations of another piece of technology that's on your phone. Hidden in this small black module on your camera bump is what's called a LIDAR, a time of flight sensor. This LIDAR isn't taking normal pictures. To see what it does, we actually need to look through a separate camera, an infrared camera. When we do that, we can see that every time we take a picture, our phone is sending out hundreds of lasers into the scene. If you don't believe me, here's another example at my desk. Go Steelers. So why do we do this at all? Why do we need to send out hundreds of lasers every single time we take a picture? The answer is that it helps our phones understand the distance between our phone and the scene. So take this scene, for example. Every time your phone sends out a laser, it's timing how long it takes for that light to travel, hit an object, and then return back to the camera. Secretly, your phone is actually counting photons from that laser pulse. Photons are the fundamental particle of light which your phone can individually detect. And by timing how long it takes for those photons in each laser to return, your phone can understand the distance to each of these points in the scene. So we're using the time delay of photon returns to infer distance. And if you scan the scene enough times, your phone might get something that looks like this, a depth map of the scene, which your phone can use to autofocus better, for example. But the key here is that your phone, every time you take a picture, is counting individual photons of light. And if we use those photons as cameras, we can uncover even more hidden information. Let's go back to the scene, for example. I'm gonna shoot a single laser pulse at the right wall, like I'm showing here. And using LiDAR technology that's very similar to the technology on your phone, just a lab recreation, we can actually visualize the photons from that laser pulse, hit the wall, and then propagate, scatter, and spread throughout the scene, visualizing light in ultra, ultra slow motion. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So what you just saw is what's called a light in flight video. We're looking at actual photons from that laser pulse as they hit the wall and spread, propagate throughout the rest of the scene. And the cool thing about this is that when you break down light to the photon level, you can uncover even more hidden information. Take this video. We can see reflections and shadows as usual in this video, but 
from this type of information, we can also understand and see photons that bounce around multiple times. We can also see photons that scatter through objects, uncovering even more. Now, AI systems definitely don't know how to use this type of information, at least today. So my work at MIT has been around designing new AI systems that can use this single photon information to see more. I've designed systems that can take single photon data from your phone and actually understand more about the 3D world around you. And by detecting those photons that bounce around multiple times in a scene, we can even uncover, unveil objects that our phone could have never seen from our point of view. So by now, we've seen some examples that our phone, the camera on our phone, is capable of doing a lot more than we think. Every time you take a picture of a shadow, we're using that shadow and the sun as a camera to see hidden objects outside of our field of view. When you take a picture of an object, we can use the reflections on that object to create models of the world around us, potentially also revealing something new. And every time you take a picture, your phone is sending out hundreds of lasers, billions of photons, and we can use those individual photons to uncover even more hidden information. And that was just my camera roll. So after this, I'd invite you all to take out your phones, take a look at your camera roll, and take a closer look at some of the photos that you've already taken. And from those photos, you might just see the invisible. Thank you. <laughs>